Be of the Pan Africanist Congress firmly believe that the masses are their own liberators and they can and are actually in the process of liberating themselves. De zwarte massa's in Zuid-Afrika in opstand. Ondanks de racistische terreur die steeds weer slachtoffers eist, gaat het zwarte volksverzet door. Demonstraties, boycottacties, stakingen, aanval op collaborateurs en het begin van de gewapende strijd. In dit vrijheidsjournaal een ontmoeting met Johnson Malambo, de voorzitter van het Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Het Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania is een zwarte bevrijdingsorganisatie in Zuid-Afrika. Het Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania werd in 1959 opgericht. Het PSC voert strijd voor een vrij Zuid-Afrika wat de naam Azania zal dragen. Azania betekent het land van de zwarte. Uitgangspunten van het PSC zijn zelfbeschikking voor de zwarte onderdrukte meerderheid, het land terug aan deze meerderheid, werkelijke controle van de zwarte over de nationale rijkdommen, waaronder de bodemschatten, industrie en landbouw, ten bate van het volk van een bevrijd Azania. In dit Azania wil de PSC een nieuwe sociale orde. We are going to establish a new social order whose content is socialism, whose form is democratic, whose uh, character is non-racial. De PSC organiseert in 1960 een grote campagne tegen de passenwetten. Dit leidt op 21 maart 1960 tot massademonstraties. Onder meer in Sharpville, waar 20.000 zwarte demonstreren. De politie richt een bloedbad aan onder de vreedzame demonstranten. Er vallen 69 doden. In de jaren na 1960 volgt er een golf van arrestaties en terreurvonnissen. Alleen al in 1963 worden er 100 PSC-leden opgehangen. Het verboden PSC heeft een grote invloed op de bevrijdingstijd in Zuid-Afrika. De PSC-politiek van non-coöperatie, van het weigeren van elke samenwerking met het blanke kolonistenregime, vindt nu algemeen weerklank. Zwarte lokale overheden, politie en dergelijke die met het blanke regime samenwerken, worden aangevallen door de zwarte bevolking. Our policy of non-collaboration has led to the rejection by the people of all dummy institutions. Er zitten nog vele PSC-leden gevangen, waaronder een van de oudste politieke gevangenen in Zuid-Afrika, Sepp Motopeng. Johnson Malambo heeft zelf 20 jaar gevangen gezeten op het gevangeniseiland Robben Eiland. Hij werd in 1963 gearresteerd wegens deelname aan het gewapende verzet van het PSC tegen het racistische regime. Malambo sprak op een aantal grote solidariteitsbijeenkomsten in Duitsland. You are part of humanity and the apartheid regime is therefore committing a crime against each and every one of you. You have each one of you a duty to fight against this crime and that is why you are here tonight. I 
was arrested for participation in the armed struggle under the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. There were many things that uh, were done to me and to other political prisoners. There were occasions when I was actually throttled until I lost consciousness. There were occasions in which I was buried in a trench, completely covered up in earth. And it was during that time that uh, one of the prison guards, a certain Pete Klein, Klein Hans, came over and urinated over my face. So the authorities there would actually go on to starve us. During weekends, they would remove all the blankets from the cells and only leave you with mats. And it's a cold cement floor, cement walls, and a thick cement ceiling. Now, uh, we would be subjected to such conditions for the whole day. You are theoretically supposed to have two visits per year or two letters per year. But you'd find that you would be fortunate if you received one letter in two years' time. On uh, two occasions during which I was found to be having a newspaper in my possession, on each of those occasions I was kept in isolation under very cold conditions and not allowed to talk to anybody for a period of six months that is for each particular occasion. In 1963, many members of the PAC were arrested and sent to prison. 124 of them were sentenced to death between 1962 and 1968 and actually hanged. John Kosi was only 18 years of age in 1963 and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. We still have a significant number of uh, political prisoners on Robben Island, including some of the comrades who got onto Robben Island with me. People like John Kosi, who was only 18 years, and Jafta Masemula, uh, who are serving life imprisonment. They are the first political prisoners in our country to be sentenced to life. They are still there. At this particular moment, Comrade Zephaniah Mutuping, a senior member of the PAC, in fact, is the most senior at this particular stage, is languishing in prison. And Comrade Zephaniah Mutuping has involved himself in the fight against Bantu education from its inception in 1953, when he was president of the Transvaal African Teachers Association. That was the first time as far as I know, when he was actually arrested. In 1985, February, he refused to accept conditional release from PW border. According to Mangaliso Robert Sugu, where our founder president, he stressed mental liberation and he liberated our minds first and foremost by launching what we call the status campaign the first campaign that the PAC launched which was a campaign to liberate the mind 
he emphasized that you can't fight and defeat your enemy if you believe that he is your superior and our people had been taught over 300 years to believe that the white man is a, su a superman so that uh, in actual practice he led us in campaigns where we asserted ourselves we refused being called jack and john and jane and anne because the white people would not go out of their way to ask what is your name they just decide no you are john and then you are john so what now mangal subuge taught us self-respect and it is this self-confidence that actually made us to be mentally liberated it is this teaching which made us on the 21st march to be prepared to leave even our passes at home and go to the police station the police were surprised because every time an african who does not have a pass sees a policeman he runs away as you are aware at the present stage our people are mentally liberated that is why they are prepared to use their homemade weapons Allow me now to pinpoint some of the salient points of the current uprising. First, our people in an organized manner have rejected the so-called new constitution. Secondly, our people in the townships have rejected the urban councils, which are an instrument of oppression. They have thus destroyed the regime's administrative structures in the townships. Thirdly, our people have dealt with collaborators and agents of the regime in the African townships. This has led to the destruction of the regime's information gathering structures. The fourth point, the regime can no longer send its army and police into the townships and keep them there for a long time. The Pan-Africanist Congress does not doubt the fact that we have a very mighty enemy to fight against. The white settler minority regime has a complete monopoly of political, economic, cultural, and military power. So they appear to be unassailable. Also, they have the backing of Western imperialist countries. The confrontation between the oppressed and the minority racist regime in the past 17 months has reached unprecedented heights. It has led to over 1,100 Azanian patriots being killed. On 12 December 1985, the racist authorities sentenced to death six Azanian patriots for allegedly killing the puppet deputy mayor of Sharpville. For the first time, a woman comrade, Teresa Ramashamula, has been sentenced to death for a political offense. Little international outcry has been heard about the passing of death sentences on these patriots. There are certain reforms which uh, they are making to the apartheid system. They are being prodded by the Americans and the British 
and other Western capitalist uh, countries, including Japan also, who have investments there. Apartheid had uh, facilitated the reaping of super profits. They are not obviously interested in the total destruction of apartheid. They want to reform apartheid. They are interested in the protection of their profits. They are interested in the protection of the free enterprise system. The reforms from PW Buddha can never really liberate us because in any case, apartheid is a crime. It is an evil thing. How can you reform an evil thing? Apartheid, according to the late chairman of the PEC, John Nyati Pogela, cannot be reformed. It must be totally destroyed. Arm struggle in our view, which is not to be carried out by one or two isolated trained guerrillas, but is to be carried out by the masses as a whole, uh, is only starting. The Pan Africanist Congress believes in change that will come from the oppressed people themselves because they are their own liberators. And the duty of the Pan-Africanist Congress is to increase the fighting capacity of our masses. That is our task. We will have liberation at a time determined by the strength of our people. The 1980s are the decade of the Azanian Revolution. We have said in 1959, and we say so today, that South Africa or occupied Azania is not an island and it cannot solve its own problems in a manner in which uh, is not related to the general trend in Africa. The general trend in Africa has been that white domination has been overthrown. There is self-determination by the African people. In our country, we are fighting for self-determination and the Azanian masses are the instrument of change, we are confident of victory. It is not a question of whether we win. The question is when we shall win. We are going to establish a new social order whose content is socialism, whose form is democratic, whose uh, character is non-racial and we say this is a society that will cater for the material and spiritual needs of the individual and we go on to say in that society we will accept as Africans anyone who pays his one and only loyalty to Africa and who accepts the democratic rule of the African majority. That is the vision of the social order which the Pan-Africanist Congress wishes to establish. I am here then to appeal to you to help increase the fighting capacity of our people. I call upon the people of uh, Holland. They have a historical task because it was from within their country that the Dutch company came to colonize our country. You are part of humanity. 
and the apartheid regime is therefore committing a crime against each and every one of you. You have each one of you a duty to fight against this crime. Sinon, vous êtes